Hey, what's up, Schnell? Welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. But today, we have a special, special episode. But I'm playing this just because I feel like it. And that is Morbid Angel's Abominations of Desolation. But happy 34th anniversary. Yes, I am older than this record. Happy 34th birthday slash anniversary to my personal number one favorite death metal record of all time. Alters of Madness by the mighty Morbid Angel. Yeah, my cry. Oh my god. Where do we even begin? Now, first, let's get this out of the way real fast. Because technically, this is the first Morbid Angel album. And if you're like, what? Yeah. Abominations of Desolation, that's the original cover art. Yeah, they... We, I'm sorry... Weak. That's weak. But I understand because, you know, this is not the new Morbid Angle, <laughs> Morbid Angel album. They don't turn to Morbid Angle, in my opinion, until, like, see, I haven't heard Heretic in a very long time. But, like, the last time I listened to it, yeah, I don't know. It just... I always hated the cover art, too. It just, like, bothered me. But, whatever. So, this came out around the time of Blessed Art of Sick. But, this, to me, is my second favorite Morbid Angel lineup. Studio-wise. Then, obviously, the Altars of Madness lineup. And then, Formulas Fatal to the Flesh. Or, I should say, Gateways to Annihilation, because I'm a positive Rutan is on that. But, this most classic under ground death metal masterpiece is taken directly from the original master tapes, showcasing early rough versions of such infamous tracks as Abominations, as well as many previously unavailable titles. But you get like The Invocation, Chapel of Ghouls, Unholy Blasphemies, Angel of Disease, uh, Asgoth, The Gate, Lord of All Fevers and Plagues, Hellspawn, Abomination, De Demon, Demon Seed, and Welcome to Hell. Just killer shit. Mike Browning, I, I, I'm a big Nocturnus fan, so like he just sounds so sick. But to me, Dave Vincent, just, I don't know. There's something about, I go back and forth sometimes, honestly. But... This error of Dave Vincent is, like, kind of unfuckable. It's, like, you know, top of the game. I guess it's a 2005 tour shirt. It's Chaos something. I forget the... It was with, uh... Fuck. It might have... It was, like, some terrible new metal band. But, like... I think Soulfly, honestly, might have headlined over Morbid Angel. Or Sepultura. I don't remember. Like, honestly. Like, I have, like, a... Like, I remember that show. I'm wearing the fucking tour t-shirt. But, like, I don't remember the lineup. But... I would love to get the 200-gram vinyl... I think it's even a double LP 
I'm not, I forget, but 200 gram clear gatefold? Yeah, that sounds fucking sick to me. And this was also the first ever death metal album I heard. So there's also that. And I'm not going to get out some blood incantation stuff and start showing you similarities. But just know that they are there and they're kind of, if you know what you're looking for, they're there. But I love even the artwork on the fucking insert. Like, so classic. I know you folks have seen this t-shirt in the wild. I know, same here. And this reissue of Alters was 2016. Black vinyl. I got this in Gateways on the same order, I remember. Like on vinyl. I don't have this on cassette anymore. I used to have an original version, and it was like so just gnarly sounding because like whoever had it before me must have listened to it every day because it was like kind of wonky but like it kind of added to it it's hard to explain like it like made it almost heavier sometimes like my one incantation tape did the same thing it legit like at times sounded like a wet blanket but there was also, like, um, I forget what anniversary reissue it is, but you have a version of Lord of, a version of Alters with Lord of Fevers and Plagues on it. Kind of always bothered me it wasn't on the vinyl reissue, you know? I just kind of assumed it would be on there. It's one of my favorite Morbid Angel songs. I know it gets kind of repetitive, but, like, it's just a badass fucking song, like, but my favorite, Chapel of Ghouls, Blasphemy, Suffocation, I mean, Maze of Torment, Visions from the Dark Side, Immortal Rites, Bleed for the Devil, Evil Spells, like, where do you even begin? Like, Richard Burnell on lead guitars with Trey back in his self-mutilation days. I could have swore he was bleeding in this, but I am wrong. That might be a different record, actually. But everything about this record is perfect. The production, the vocals, that fucking promo photo. Like, yeah, put a shirt on, but, like, still... It's fucking badass. This is... Want to get into an argument? Is it death metal? Or is it black metal? I've legit had this argument. Now, real quick. Here is... Abominations of Desolation. On cassette. Earache reissue, well, 1991, so this is not a reissue. This is the uh, original cassette version. Thank you to Dominic. You fucking rule, boss. But this wouldn't be possible without Dominic. But Alters, I, I actually got that on my own. And it's, like, again, I just want to really say I feel kind of very old right now like i'm 38 and this record's 34 but it's not a first pressing it doesn't count i don't care <laughs> if you think that way like chill for real does it really matter does it bother you that much First pressing or no pressing. 2016 reissue. 
Like, why would you not want this on, like, 180 gram? Or, I don't know if they're joking, but the 200 gram? To me, that sounds gnarly. Like, clear vinyl? I just think that would just be fucking sick. As long as they don't change the cover. I don't know if you folks have ever seen the alternative t-shirt of this. It, it's horrible. It's fucking don't touch classic shit. For real. It, it, it's like what Relapse did with Suffocation, Despise the Sun. But it does look cool. But at the same time, I want the original. But, you know, it is what it is. But it's right here. So, if you know the original, then you know what I'm talking about. As soon as you see it, you're going to be like, oh, wait, why did they do that? Because <laughs> I, I ask myself the same question, and I tried not to let it, like, interfere with my feelings about it. But I just don't understand, like, first off, red on red? No. What the fuck were you thinking? You don't? No. No, no, no. Like, yeah, cool, but no. Like, make, make it outlined. It just looks like some throwaway release, and it's not. This is one of the best death metal EPs ever. And some of you might not even recognize it now because of the changed artwork. No promo photo, nothing. Pretty much just like, hey, you have to get the colored vinyl version or go fuck your own face. And what a nightmare. This was ordered like five separate times. I'm not even joking. I don't even know how I got a copy. I just got lucky. Out of one of those orders, one actually came through. And from the first time it got reissued, I pre-ordered the vinyl and the same thing happened. How do you sell out of a record if I pre-ordered it? It makes no sense. It's just, I don't even want to talk about it. because It just really pisses me. It just pisses me off. What doesn't piss me off is just how good Autism Madness by Borbid Angel is. And I know I got off topic with the black metal stuff, but here's what I'm trying to say. Now, the old poser test in Norway was, hey, do you like the new Morbid Angel record? Meaning, bless are the sick. If you said yes, like, eh, nope. Poser, like, you're out. It was very gnarly back then when it came to that type of shit. But, like, nowadays, I feel like a lot of people probably don't even listen to Morbid Angel, but say they do. I just have that feeling, like, you know, some dudes in, like, some hardcore bands or, like, you know, whatever... Just getting some Morbid Angel shirts because why not? They look cool. I get it. But at the same time, save them for the fucking true fans. Like, I would... It actually kind of bothers me I don't have an OG, like, just straight up Morbid Angel logo. I have Abominations of Desolation, but... That shirt right there is so fucking cool. I have a, a different version of that. But, to, like, Pete, just so savage. Trey, get well, brother. And Dave, just come on. Everybody's got to get... Uh, I wish just sometimes, you know, you could have both Dave and Tucker together on tour. But it's never going to happen. Because that would just be so cool to be like, hey, we're going to play four songs off of Covenant. And then, like, we're going to play two songs off Formulas, two off of Gateways, and then 
we're gonna play some abomination stuff. I mean, uh, some alters of madness stuff, but like go back and forth like with vocalists slash bassists. I just think that would be fucking cool. Like the Mike Browning thing's probably like if you like that would never happen. I don't think. Well, Browning still is a the last Nocturnus record, the Nocturnus AD Paradox record. I still listen to and fucking love. Is it the key? No, but it's still really fucking good. But, like, having Charlie fill in for drums, that's an amazing thing, especially for Charlie. So, you know, that's one of those things, like, it would be sick to have, like, Mike Browning on a tour, and everybody from all, like, three vocalists having different tracks. I just think that'd be cool, but it would never happen. That's like wishful thinking. But I am morbid and morbid angel coming back together as one. I don't know. But seeing Trey get carried off that stage it was legit hard to watch. So best wishes to Trey. And again, I know I got off topic, but Due to the subject matter and evilness of Alters of Madness and Dave Vincent's very distinctive vocal style, which is not ultra guttural, it's more like, like it's more like just very angry and just evil sounding, but it's not like brutal. If you get what I'm saying, it's not like, you know, like, there, there's no, like, inhuman style of vocals like that. There's no, like, Demi Lich style, like, burping. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just, like, a straightforward, <laughs> it's awesome, and it makes you want to squeeze invisible fruit, and I understand where that black metal argument comes in, because... A lot of the lyrics, legit, it could they could be on a black metal record. I, I mean, just read them if you don't believe me. But this is death metal. I don't care. To me, this is the first death metal record I listened to. This was the game changer. This has such a big influence on my life. Thank you to Morbid Angel. 1989 Alters of Madness. Happy 34th anniversary. Get well soon. I hope everything's cool. And you maniacs at home fucking rule. Thanks as always for watching. Hails. <laughs>